Okay, welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness, uh, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Uh, we're going to be doing a simple meditation, and uh, as I've said this before and shared it with you, is the easiest way and fastest way that you can bring your mind into silence and you can become really quiet is always if you bring and divert your attention to the source of your thoughts where do your thoughts come from and what is the first thought that appears when you think it always starts with the i thought i am i am this i am that i'm sleepy i'm tired i just woke up i didn't sleep well i slept really well I need to have my coffee, I need to have some tea, I need to walk my dog, I need to go to the bathroom. It's always with the I thought. So if you divert your attention back to the source of your thoughts and follow this, you come to this point within yourself. And it's mute. If you do it correctly, attentively, and bring your attention straight back and follow the I thought, your first thought, me, follow it to its source, it goes into silence. Your mind goes into silence because prior to the I thought, me, my whole story, prior to that, what is prior to that? What's before you start thinking? And then the mind goes to silence and you keep your attention on that, on that point. As easy as that. It doesn't require any kind of effort. If you start putting effort, if you're struggling, you're not doing it right. If you're not able to do it and there's any kind of struggle, then you're not doing it correctly. It has to be effortless completely it's just simply shifting your attention to the very one point within yourself and almost immediately you discover that it's silent and quiet So keep your attention on this one point within yourself and relax into it. And stay focused on keeping your attention on the one point. You can call it, it's the witness, it's the watcher within you or it's the one who is aware. You're simply keeping your attention there.
Simply hanging out here, being in this moment, being available, but not engaged with any mental activities. You are here, you are present, but you're not involved. You are aware, but you're not involved of what you are aware of. Simply present. Very simple, easy practice. Returning to your natural state of being here, of being simply here. Slowly, slowly come back. Come back here. When you do this practice, in this very simple way, you can see how easily you disengage from the world of the thoughts and you reconnect with the presence of yourself. The presence which is always here, it's always available and you're simply diverted your attention inwards very effortlessly 
and immediately you tap into the unified field of awareness the 5d quantum awareness which is here you tap into it and as you go a little bit deeper within yourself and you become more quiet you start to experience this expansion that you find yourself a part of the expansion you discover yourself a part of the whole and it's almost immediate when it happens and of course we're not doing a long meditation here because we don't have time but if you take your time every day and put a little bit of time uh, in, for meditation in your uh, daily practice and then you can dive into this deeper and you will begin to see the changes happening in your life because you become more familiar and more um, intimate with silence and as silence begin to take over your life and silence is much more powerful than words silence gives you the ability to maneuver through life beyond any kind of imagination because silence is the very foundation of the awakening everything that is beautiful and has any value comes from silence and to somebody who is new to this they may wondering like what in the world are you talking about but the power of silence is beyond anything that exists and those of you who been with me or been doing the work and familiar with being quiet being silent have experienced this you have experienced increased energy your vision your intuitive knowing has increased and most importantly you find yourself completely aligned with with life you can see how things really easily come together and fall into places for you in your daily life when you're quiet when you don't react no matter what the situation is you remain very still and you don't react to it even though right now five minutes ago your your mom your partner came and tell you after you did a lot of good work at the house and they come and tell you you're an asshole or you're a slacker and you don't do anything you're a slob and it's completely not true and you've been doing a lot of good work you've been cleaning up you've been responsible and then somebody comes and is being very unappreciative to you and they insult you by telling something which is not true but you just simply remain very quiet and silent and you don't get engaged in defending yourself and jumping into this argument you use that situation as an opportunity to enhance your spirituality to enhance going deeper into the silence and you don't react to it you stay still and quiet and the magic starts to happen it's incredible what happens it's incredible what a power it has and how impactful it it becomes when you simply not reacting to life and you simply practicing 
being quiet, every day you get the opportunity and being still. Because let's say someone's insulted you, what have they insulted? To whom have they insult, insult has come to? And this is a subject I'm gonna be talking about today is you trace back your thoughts and you come to, you go back inside, keep going inside, you look, you look inside your mind, you trace your thoughts back, and it all comes to the thought of me, me or I, it goes into that thought. <clears throat> and quite often, I would say 99.99% ,99 .99 of our existence in the world living a daily life or if you get engaged in a spiritual life we don't examine the subject we're only examining the object so what is happening is that there is an there is a uh, subject and there's an object and the subject is you can refer it to as the watcher or you can refer it to as you, it's your you, your mind, your thoughts, your identity, the way you relate yourself to existence is through your thoughts, your thinking, your idea of who you are. I am Zarathustra, I am a man, I am American, I'm Persian, I'm a spiritual teacher, you refer to yourself as this subject who has this thoughts, these mind thinking and is also feeling whatever is feeling. This unit that is capable of thinking and is capable of feeling emotions and it's capable of feeling whatever the body sensations come up with. So, so the part we always missing is we're not investigating the subject. We're investigating objects. What's happening to me? What am I thinking about? How do I feel? How does my body feel? And what is happening in the world? Events of the world you're paying attention to them. Those are objects, they come and go. And your thoughts and your emotions are objects and they come and go. They're not there all the time. You don't always think of the same thing. You don't always feel the same way. It's coming and going. So there are objects. And the one, the person who's looking at these things is the one that you're not investigating. Check it out. You get into spiritual work and what do you do? What most people do when they're doing spiritual work? They go to a workshop or they're reading a spiritual book, right? So you are doing work to get clues of to what? Clues that how you can come to happiness. Clues that how you can get over the hump. You want to get clues of how you can manipulate a situation so things go your way. I'll give you an example. For example, you want to learn how to manifest things in your life. Manifest a lover, manifest a better job. You know, you're, you're working on yourself so you're hoping through working on yourself, you can improve your life quality. Okay, you're not working on yourself to pass time. You're not working on yourself because it's trendy or it's cute. You're working on yourself because you want to improve your life's quality. Something's wrong. Something's not working for you. 
and you're trying to manipulate that so it works for you. That's what is going on. Or you're not, or work on your anger issue, or work on your abandonment issue, or work on that you were sexually abused or emotionally abused with your guardians or parents. There is a problem, or whatever is the situation. You're trying to work on that so you can improve yourself, so you can achieve or overcome this problem. So I hope I'm clear about that. So I don't think I need to go over it again. So as you're doing this work, it all comes to what? To me. I'm doing it because for me. So I'm trying to fix things. I'm trying to improve myself. I'm trying to improve my life. I'm trying to whatever I do because I want to get something for me. That's always comes back to me because I'm the important person. It's me. What's in there for me naturally. And that's what is going on with 7 billion people on the planet. What's in it for me? If there's nothing in it for me, then I'm not interested. So, but this me doesn't get investigated. We're trying to provide things for it, but you're not investigated. Where does this me come from? And that's where the downfall is. That's where we're missing the boat because we're trying to fix an object outside of ourselves to fit the subject. But where does the subject come from? Where is this me? There's this I coming from. Who is this one? Where does this one come to equation? And this is where it's being missed on spiritual practice because the attention is not on this one. The attention again is on the objects. And that's how we've been trained. And most our, most our spiritual teachings and practice is, is pushing us outwards to look for that. So we are missing the point and you don't get to it. You get good into manipulating things and sometimes you get what you want, but you're not really going after the source of, of the problem where it's coming from. And the problem is your, the mind, the thoughts. But where do the thoughts come from? And to whom are they really important? And this person comes and insults you, who's a relative of yours or a very close person to you. Who have they insulted? This insult that comes, to whom does it really matter? And you say to me, I, I've been insulted. Okay, and where does this me come from? Where is this sense of me, the thought that comes, where does that come from? Where is this me when you're sleeping at night and you're not dreaming? Where does me go to? Where does it go to? What happened to it? When you're sleeping and you're not dreaming. I'm not talking about if you still have any kind of dream, uh, you're in a dream state, whether in your level one or two or three, and there's some kind of uh, noticeable REM is happening and you have some kind of recollection of sleeping. Because in the first three phases of sleep state, the first state is you're fully aware of your dream. Uh, you can call it the lucid dream. You wake up the next morning and you are completely aware you were dreaming and you don't, you're not very rested because your mind did not relax. It was engaged and you were in this other world and everything is very real when you're dreaming. So it's really happening. And then you wake up whether your dream is good or bad. If it's a bad dream, you're happy that it was a dream. And if it's a good dream, then you say, damn it, 
Why did I wake up? I was with my beloved. I was just about to kiss my sweetheart and I, and I woke up. So you're bummed out why the dream ended. Then the second level of the sleep is that you sleep and you wake up the next day. You don't really fully remember your dream, but you know you were dreaming. But when you wake up, you can't remember it. Or after a few seconds, you completely forget the whole thing. But you know you were engaged and you're still not 100% rested. Then it's the third level of, of sleeping is that in this level, you wake up the next day and you're, you know there was some dream happening. You know something was going on. You're not 100% rested. You know there was activities when you were sleeping, but you're not, you can't pinpoint it. Then there's the fourth level of sleeping, which you have a very, very small dosage of REM activities. And those are the ones that when you sleep and you wake up the next, the next day, or even if you sleep for two hours, six hours, eight hours, you wake up and you're really refreshed, you're full of energy, you feel really good, and you basically tell yourself or tell your friend that, oh my God, I was gone. I slept and I was gone. And you wish you could sleep every night like that. And sometimes when you have issues in your life and you sleep and you're gone, you wish that you were sleeping. Because when you sleep and you don't dream in that fourth level of sleeping, all your problems, all your issues, everything disappears. The world disappears. You are sleeping even if you're hugging your honey, your beloved or your baby, your child or whatever. You sleep and you have no recollection of yourself, absolutely no idea that you are. There's no awareness, not, there's no watcher, there's not even the awareness of the awareness, that disappears too. And as you disappear, then you don't have your house mortgage, you don't have your auto payment, you don't have to you have, don't have to go to school, deal with your kids, you don't have your bills, you don't have your health issues. No, nothing. Everything disappears. Everything's gone. And you are gone. So what happens to you? Where do you go? What happens to you when you sleep and you don't dream? Where do you go? I want you to investigate that. I want you to go there and take a look at that. Where do you go when you sleep and you don't dream? What happens to you? What happens to the world? Where are your problems? Where are your concerns? You're really worried about animals' rights. You're really worried about their cutting through the forest and destroying the forest. You're really worried about the future of the planet. You're worried about 5G technology. The radiation comes from 5G. But when you sleep and you don't dream, where do they go? Where do these problems go? Why do they disappear? They disappear because you're not there. They disappear because you disappear. So where did you go? Where do you go to? No, it's not an astral travel because astral travel still the, the awareness is there. The witness is there. Something is being witnessed when you're doing astral travel, when you're doing out of body travel, there's still 
a recollection of another state. When you sleep and you don't dream, you do fall into the ocean of nothingness. You go back to pure consciousness. You fall back into your original state, pure being. Like what we did in meditation and we have, what we have done many times when we're together in a workshop and we dive into this place which you are still present, you are still here, but you are not anything. It's complete expansion. And I know a lot of you have been with me and you have come and told me that. That Zarathustra, I don't know what happened. I was in a complete blissed out place. But when you're in this blissed out place, there is no you in the moment when it's happening reporting it that, oh my God, I'm completely blissed out. You always say it afterwards. You come and tell me I was completely gone. But you can't say I am gone when you're gone because there's no you. The I, the person, the individual doesn't get blissed out. It's in the absence of the I. I am someone. I am an individual separated from the eternity. It's in that absence that I come and say I was blissed out. But not when you are in the zone because there is no you. It's only that. It's only existence. It's the presence. So what I'm saying is that it's not that this place is only limited to a few awakened beings on this planet, a few saints or sages who have been here and gone, or maybe there's a few of them around right now. It's that it's your very true nature. It's a very part of your own being. But you're not you but we are missing the boat by not putting our attention on the subject, by not putting the attention or questioning your own sense of individual being, your own sense of the I thought. I I am such and such. You're not questioning the I your sense of individuality. That's not being questioned. And since that's not being challenged, the attention goes on all the objects. And therefore you go round and round and round because you're perceiving yourself as a person and this person is looking for ways to connect and to fix itself. But if you go deep inside, you may question the existence of this person that it, it's, you may question it that maybe it's imaginary, maybe it's non-existing, maybe it's just a thought, which hardly ever Human beings do that. And very little schools of spirituality challenge you on it or push you in that direction. Question yourself. Question where does this thought of I come from? This me. 
Where does it come from? Why, when I'm quiet and silent, I mean there is no me and there is no mind activities, why do I feel so great? Why is life starting to really line up for me when I'm silent? When there is no mind activity, when there is no I thought involved. I'm alive, I'm here, but there's no thoughts. Well, thoughts come to who? Thoughts come to me. Okay, now I'm bypassing me. I'm bypassing the thought of myself. And I'm absolutely silent. And what's in there that really changes my life completely and everything gets synchronized? You want to investigate that. And you want to go for the source. And the more you keep your attention and focus on challenging this thought of me, the more it's, you fall back into the source of pre-thinking the more you are creating the space and giving yourself an opportunity to go pre-thoughts. You go behind your mind before any thoughts come and you fall back into that place. And that's where your power is. That's where it's that's fifth 5D, that's fifth dimension. The unified field of oneness without the illusion of duality. A unified field of oneness, a unified field of the being, but there is no separation in it. It's pure oneness. And pure oneness means that there is still not a you in there claiming you're in oneness because you have dissolved into the absolute. And that's where the magic is. That's what everything changes. That's where impossible becomes possible. That's where you come out of time. And time, you realize, doesn't exist. Because time comes from timeless. That's how time has come. And the world has come from the I thought. It has come from the oneness, from the eternal now, you can call it, in Buddhism, they call it the nothingness. From nothing appears everything. And then when you sleep at night and you're not dreaming, everything that appeared folds back and goes back to nothing. So the more you begin to get directed in that way, the more you begin to realize that, is this world that I'm engaged in real? If it disappears and appears, is it real? Do I need to really concern myself with the world's affairs all these things that I get very angry about or are con I used to be concerned about, they begin to lose their grip. They begin to not be very important anymore because you're questioning 
Number one, that whether you are real or not, your idea of what you think you are. I'm not talking about your existence. I'm talking about the idea of what you think you are. Is it real? Because you're really questioning that and you're going beyond that. You're going into the silence. You're going into the silence and the world of appearance, the world of appearance begins to become translucent. You start to see gaps and holes in it that, oh, wait a minute, it's not always there. It's not really that real. Oh, wow, my hand, went, my hand just went through the wall. I thought this wall is real, but how come my hand is going through it? Maybe it's not really that real. Or why, 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 do, why do miracles start to happen around me all the time? How come impossible has become possible for me? What is it that all of a sudden everything's very harmonious? I'm not trying to manipulate events. I'm disengaging from the events and all of a sudden everything becomes harmonious. Everything comes to me without me trying to doing anything. Whatever I need appears. A lot of people attribute that to that they have learned techniques of how to manipulate the world of dimensions. I'm referring to the other way around. You're not trying to manipulate anything at all. You're just letting all of it go. It's so interesting because once you start to realize it, you realize that, wow, the entire thing is upside down. It means everything you've been taught to, of course, it was a, it's, a, it's a part of the grand plan that's supposed to be that way. But you realize that everything you've been taught to is really not true. It's not real. It's all bullshit. All of it is designed to keep you engaged into the world of Maya, a world that doesn't really have any substance. It appears to be real, but it's not. Only an appearance. And it cannot hold its own structural integrity because it's always changing from one thing to another. It cannot stay the same continuously it's changing from one thing to another because it's not real. It's relatively real, but it's not real in the absolute. And as you begin to do the work and investigate, then this web of the mind, this you know spider web that you've been really tied into, because up to now you really, really believed everything is real and you get very passionate about it and you want to go to war and you want to demonstrate and you want to fight and you're angry and you're writing emails to people, to your politicians or whatever. And this, the tie of it starts to fall, you know, break, you know, the, this bandwidth, bandwidths, they're starting to get ripped off and you start to get free from this imaginary because it's a projection of your mind. Your mind is projecting whatever you're seeing. It's a creation of the, the mind. It's all thoughts. That's why those of you who've been with me, the more you have become quiet, the higher you have gone, the higher you begin to experience your life quality. The quality of your life 
has drastically changed the more you have become silent. Because the world of thoughts, the entire thing is a mind thinking, a busy, chaotic mind thinking all the time. And that's what it is. So to, to counter that, you don't want to get engaged in it to fix it because now you're activating your mind more by being engaged in the world of thought. You have to be quiet and silent. And then the world that you're trying to change will change according to where you're at. Don't worry about the world about other people. Just stick to your own business. Uh, just deal with yourself for the moment. In the beginning, you have to be selfish. Once you're starting to discover this, in the beginning, you have to be absolutely selfish. Work on yourself. Disengage from the Maya. Don't worry about other people at this point. Just stick to what you're doing. Don't create distraction for yourself by trying to fix things. As you become quiet and silent, the power of silence will be emanating through you and it will be putting an impact in your surrounding. It's as simple as that. It's an inside job. It's totally, completely an inside job. And those of you who are interested in healing work that you've been with me, you have experienced when you're quiet and not engaged, the healer appears. The power of healing drastically increases because you become an empty conduit. You become an empty vessel of light. You become pure vessel for God to operate through you because there's no mind there. There's no one in, in this conduit, in this hole that is running through. It's not clogged. You're out of the way. So now God channels, comes through you, uses you to blast through. So if you're engaged in doing healing work, then tremendous amount of healing power will come through you and heals whatever needs to heal, touches whatever needs to touch. And all of a sudden, you witness incredible things happen around you. That all of a sudden, someone with very serious health issues get healed. Beyond your imagination. And you're wondering, what happened? What just happened? Because that comes through you and do the work. You just have to be empty. Or you have access to tremendous amount of information. Let's say you're channeling for someone. You're, you're doing psychic work, you're channeling, you're being a medium, and all of a sudden you're empty, you're present, and brrr, information data starts to flow through you and you start saying things to other people or that person you work with and you start giving them valuable information that there's no way in the world you can have access to and it just pours out of you because you're empty there is no you there is no i there's no me trying to do it, me is not there, me is gone, me has taken the back seat, so now it's that, the boss, big kahuna, 
uses you because the presence is always here and the presence it's always going to channel through anyone who's empty as soon as you're empty god starts to channel through you i don't care what kind of spiritual training you've gone through the moment you're empty god begins to channel through you in whatever way maybe you're a mom and you're a better mom more compassionate maybe you work in the government office and all of a sudden you're very loving caring and and just you have a magic touch and whatever you do is right your boss your co-workers people clients coming and they're all customers they're all attracted to you they want you to do their work because you're channeling god energy because you're empty so i encourage you to challenge yourself challenge the thought of myself me the i thought look for it trace trace your thoughts back and comes to me and see who is this me question it who am i who is this me who gets insulted who gets angry who is short fuse who is hurt who who is this me question them and see what happens you have nothing to lose you can always pick it up again if you like it's not going to go anywhere you can always pick it up but for now question it and see where it goes and we will be very amazed the more you're questioning it the more you become quiet the more you get silent and the more you get silent it feeds off of itself the more you're silent the more magic happens in your life The more magic happens in your life, the more you want to be silent. Ms. Shishi, what do we have? Anything interesting? Uh... I'm just in the silence. I can't think of anything. <laughs> Had a girl. Anybody has any questions? You can. Those of you on the academy, or I'm seeing you. If you have questions, you're welcome to wave at me. I'll unmute you, and we can talk. Hi, Marit. I, <clears throat> I had an experience some days ago. Okay. I was home. Can you talk a little bit louder, please? Okay. Better now? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I had an experience some days ago. I was at home and I was walking from one room to another. And looking around and... Uh, Everything was like it used to be, but I was not there. I knew it with every cell in my body. I'm not here. I was just uh, observing it all from somewhere else. Mm, interesting. So you are you're at home, you're walking around and all of a sudden you began to experience that you were not identified with your body anymore. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. There was, there was a sense of presence, 
but you were not muddied walking around. You could see, yeah, you can see yourself, muddied is walking around in a way, but you were not there. Yeah, beautiful. And you lost it for many hours. Beautiful, that's a beautiful, powerful experience of, go ahead. What happened? What happened is, just one second. Okay, great. What happens is you <clears throat> tap into your being, your presence, the higher self, the real, the real one, the real Marit, not Marit the person, not Marit the unit, you know, not, not the body, not the mind or the emotions. You tap into your higher self, the presence, which is always here. And that one doesn't have a form. The real you is formless. The real you wasn't even born. It simply is. So you tap into that. But who was deciding that I should go there? I mean, I wouldn't like to have the experience when I have been driving my car, for instance. It, it's not always so convenient to not be here. Right. Yeah. Well, you are here when you tapped into that place. You were, you were present, but you were not engaged with your body or your mind or mm -hmm. the agendas of Marit. You, you were here, you are here, but there's no engagement. You're simply aware of a woman walking around named Marit, but you're not involved with her. So everything still is going to function the way it needs to function. Even if you're going to drive the car, okay. still everything's going to happen accordingly, but you're not engaged with it. You're simply aware. And that's a great place to be. It gives you a very clear indication that there's nothing to worry about regarding death. <clears throat> Not to worry about dying. Mm. It was very peaceful. It is very, very peaceful, beautiful. It's silent, it's quiet. Mm. Exactly, that's, congratulations. I'm very happy to hear this because you got a good glimpse of yourself. You got a very good glimpse of your presence, of your being. And that, in that place, you know all is well. All is well, there's no issues. Yeah, it's in the soul level. And that's a wonderful, wonderful place that you tapped into. Congratulations. Thank you. Hi, hi Pragya. Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> yeah. And I'm very delighted you are planning um, uh, Sedona in January or April. I'm coming. <laughs> okay, great. I'm happy to hear that. Huh. I'm going there tomorrow. I'm going to be looking at a couple places and see if I discover anything. Or maybe I can rebook the same place I got last time. So we'll see what happens. I'm sure if we're, I'm meant to put another retreat there, I'm sure it will just happen. Yeah. Yeah, as simple as that. Yeah. Has thank you for today. It was, was really 
empty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very happy you joined us. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, very nice to see you all. We've come to the end of our uh, academy time. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, we will, I'm moving the academy uh, mainly to Wednesdays. So the next academy is going to be, I know today I did it because tomorrow I'm traveling, but uh, from now on, I'm gonna try to stick to Wednesdays as much as I can. It, it flows better in my schedule. So I'll be broadcasting uh, next Wednesday live. August 7th. Pardon me? August 7th. August 7th. And those of you who are connecting with me through Facebook or Instagram, just keep in mind that uh, I appreciate your writing to me. It's very difficult for me to read the writings that you write to me while I'm talking and I'm teaching. So if you really want to connect with me and you really feel like getting engaged, come on our system. Um, go to my website, zaratustra.tv. Go to the section of the academy and register there. And we'll send you a link that you can connect through our system, Zoom. And uh, that way I get to see you and you can talk to me directly. Um, so that's the best way if you want to be directly engaged with me. But I will appreciate your, your following me on, on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, also, when uh, this, uh, video, this uh, webinar is over, we do post it. It's instantly being posted on Facebook, but we repost it and we also email it to you. And uh, also recently we have chopped these videos into five or six sections of under 10 minutes and uh, we're posting it on YouTube channel too. So um, if there's a section of it you want to watch it, you are always welcome either watching the whole thing or just going to parts of it. Okie dokie. Nice seeing you. God bless you all. And I'll see you next week. I missed it.